disease which may affect tilapia food fish development and health. Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. Throughout the past two to three years, there has been a new thrust in promoting tilapia fish farming as an opportunity to facilitate the Grow Jamaica Eat Jamaica campaign. In short, it fosters self-sustenance within the agro-industry both locally and wherever agriculture is at the forefront of food production. Today, I share in a topic which is not pleasant to discuss. Today, I share in the topic, diseases which may exist on tilapia food fish farms. The intensification of aquaculture production in Jamaica in relation to tilapia food fish itself faces a threat. This threat is ballooned into an impending problem of disease outbreaks. This will result in an economic loss to commercial fish farms and associated natural aquatic ecosystems. On large tilapia food fish farms, farmers do encounter disease outbreaks that cause low survival rates. The frequency of breakout disease occurs mainly due to the density of stocking of fish ponds. In other words, too many fish in small spaces. Several tilapia food fish farmers large and small are at times oblivious to the existence of some disease outbreaks within pond systems. Current control strategies used by tilapia fish farmers throughout the world to control aquatic pathogens include, but is not limited to use of chemotherapeutics and antibiotics. Bacterial pathogens isolated included Flavobacterium columnar, along with Aramonas, Edwardsiella, Suedominus, Steptococcus, Staphylococcus, Proteus, and Vibrio. Tilapia fish farming is not considered as simple as it seems by some. It includes the ability of the farmers to detect issues regarding fish health within fish pond system. Some of the most threatening parasites include protozoans like Ichthyopterius multifilis, Trichodina, Ichthyobodo, Trematodes clytodiscus, and Gyrodactylus. Diagnosis and control of diseases and parasites in aquaculture production systems requires adoption of a regional comprehensive biosecurity strategy. Most, if not all, tilapia food fish diseases found amongst fish stock on both large as well as small farms are influenced by intensive stressful situations faced by fish stock. It is a given that insufficient information on diseases impacting tilapia food fish production. Several hatcheries only seek assistance when the situation seems difficult or has the potential of cutting into the profit base of the farm. Smoother and collaborative efforts are needed between both by farmers and government ministries. Policymakers and food fish farmers both need to establish a preventative approach in managing aquatic borne diseases. Regular sampling of tilapia food fish stockings is needed. In addition, careful monitoring of all brood stocks purchased and shipped from other countries into the local jurisdictions. Food fish farmers should develop the practice of documenting any and every situations deemed as a threat to the production of food fish. Records of these occurrences aid in establishing existence and maintaining minimal reoccurrences within said spaces. I shared recently that large two and three acres fish farmed lands perform no water changes during the seven to eight months period in which fish stock exist in them. The reasons for this was discussed. On small tilapia fish farms, which is much different in structure and organization than large fish farm lands, the fish stocking densities are higher. Fish are kept in smaller spaces. The stock of fish still numbers over the thousands similar to large tilapia fish farmed areas. These farms need to adopt greater frequency in water change. Frequent water changes decreases the growth of harmful pathogens and bacteria, which might prove detrimental to the fish stock health. Greater effort is also needed in maintaining a steady flow of filtration mechanism within this space also. Small tilapia fish ponds are usually made from concretes, old containers, and a few earthen ponds. Other than the earthen ponds, containers and concrete ponds will not aid in the neutralization of waste matter produced by the fish stock. The increase in waste matter within your tilapia food fish water decrease the water quality needed to maintain good health of your tilapia food fish. Diseases can impact human health. 
some disease might be regarded as minute in complexity and when measured against the possible implications on the profit margin might be minimal, yet in the long run these disease may create additional health issues. While a fish may be infected with diseases which eventually may result in its death, fish can also impact the health of humans. Toxins and germs in tilapia fish can result in infertility in both males and females and is also attributed to several instances of birth defects along with prolonged health issues. There is often confusion among tilapia industry stakeholders regarding the presence of bacteria, virus, or parasite pathogens and the incidence of disease at farms. Although the presence of a pathogen is a necessary factor for disease to develop, that alone is in most cases not sufficient to induce a disease outbreak. In practice, Diseases develop when a certain combination of suboptimal environmental factors meet and the stress level of the culture population reaches a point that is detrimental to the animal's immune systems. For example, water temperature might increase or decrease depending on the season and induce fish stress. Pathogens have different optimal temperature ranges at which they induce disease. For instance Francisella species outbreaks tend to develop after a drop in temperature under 28 degrees Celsius, whereas Streptococcus aglactiae outbreaks usually occur after temperature increases above 32 degrees Celsius. In conclusion the most intensive tilapia fish farming systems suffer from 6 to 8 major infectious diseases, which must be prevented before the industry can truly become sustainable. After more than five years of sampling and disease epidemiological surveys across the Asia-Pacific region, Africa and Latin America, Intervet Norbio Singapore has identified four major bacterial disease pathogens, Streptococcus aglactiae, SNEA, Flavobacterium columnare the rickettsia-like organism recently identified as Francisella species as well as the irritivirus viral agent and several major external parasites, including Trichodina and Amelodinium. As mentioned earlier, their prevalence and severity depend on environmental factors such as geographical location, culture system, farming intensity, salinity and water temperature and biological factors such as age, genetics, nutrition and stress. I can go on speaking to this particular issue based on read research, for now I end this share. Thanks for listening, bye. The Fish Stock.